Okay, we move on to item 12, multiple submissions of international assistance requests. We are now ready to begin the examination of item 12 of our agenda, discussion on multiple submissions of international assistance requests. As a chairperson of the Bureau, I would like to explain that the Bureau discussed the subject during its first two meetings earlier this year. It was first brought to our attention that an increasing number of international assistance is being submitted to the Bureau at the same time or in quick succession. The discussion was triggered by the fact that the Bureau is, in March this year was asked during one sitting to examine four international assistance requests that were submitted by a single country. So the Bureau asked the Secretariat to, anal to analyze the number and amount of assistance requests granted to a single country, together with any other pertinent administrative issues. Having discussed the results of that analysis, the Bureau considered it important that the matter be discussed by the Committee and requested the Secretariat to inscribe this item on the agenda of this session. Mr. Secretary, please, can you take the floor to provide more details about the item? Thank you, Madam Chairperson. As the only funding mechanism exclusively, intimate, sorry, exclusively intended to supplement national efforts of state parties to safeguard their living heritage, international assistance plays a paramount importance in the implementation of the 2003 Convention. This unique tool under the ICH Fund allows for safeguarding intangible culture heritage crafted to particular needs and national contexts. Despite its value as a safeguarding tool, the international assistance mechanism has been systematic, systematically underutilized. The committee and the General Assembly have recognized this, and as a result, at its sixth session, the General Assembly decided to increase the ceiling of international assistance presented to the Bureau from 25,000 to 100,000. Since the sixth session of the General Assembly, the Secretariat has observed an important increase in the number of international assistance requests presented to and approved by the Bureau, confirming the effectiveness of that resolution. This positive trend did not come without challenges. Since the sixth session of the, Bureau of the General Assembly, the Bureau of the Intergovernmental Committee has been examining an increasing number of international assistance requests up to 100,000 and some of them with multiple requests submitted by a single country in the same year. An example of the four requests from a single country examined by the Bureau in March 2018, as also just mentioned by the chairperson. For this reason, a discussion was initiated by the Bureau earlier this year concerning multiple requests from a single country. What are the implications of these multiple submissions and, what and in order to un seek the opinion of the Bureau? So the implications, it seems, were could be discussed from different angles. Multiple submissions may be seen as a way to divide a single large request into several smaller ones, which may, in some cases, create governance uh, uh, concerns uh, in the sense of the, mul the, the multiple smaller grants being above the limit set by uh, the directives for the uh, authority of the Bureau and bypassing the committee. Moreover, as the amount of assistance that can be examined by the Bureau has increased four times, since it was increased by four times, the amount that the Bureau is increasing is significantly higher. This means that the impact on the fund is, of course, correspondingly higher when there are multiple requests. Another concern is the state's ability to sometimes to, a bit, to implement several projects at the same time. We're often faced with challenges in closing projects due to delays in implementation. And this can sometimes put in question conformity with criterion A7 of the operational directives, which is, of course, very important to mitigate potential financial risks. Members of the committee, the operational directives are silent on the issue of multiple submissions. There are no indications regarding the number of files a state can submit, nor regarding the amount it can request over a given period through the Bureau. Therefore, the, consider, the committee may consider it appropriate to propose revisions to the operational directives limiting the amount of international assistance that a single country be granted through the Bureau. At, on this point, the Bureau was inclined to suggest the limiting, limiting the total amount that can be requested by a single country 
either by limiting the amount to 100,000 per year or to 200,000 per biennium. In both cases, this would be regardless of the number of requests submitted. The Secretariat considers the limit should be based on the amount rather than the number of requests and, prefer and thinks uh, the amount of 200,000 per biennium gives more flexibility than 100,000 per year. This measure would, have, of course, exclude requests in cases of emergencies from this limitation as the time and scope of emergency cannot, need, uh, cannot be anticipated and it's also as, as foreseen in the operational directives. And the draft decision is prepared in this sen sense. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Thank you, Mr. Curtis, for this very um, useful analysis. And I think it will be very helpful for our committee. I shall open now the floor for debate. Uh, Palestine. Shukran, Sayyid al Raisa. Uh, I would like to thank the Secretariat for uh, the report, but I have just uh, only a few questions. Um, maybe it is a little bit uh, puzzling. Even if we say 200 per biennium, it is in any case, it will remain 100 per year. So I, I, it is puzzling. So please uh, give me the explanation later. I have another question also regarding the annex to the report. In the annex, actually, we see, uh, let me go to it, we see the number of requests for each country and the uh, outcome, the recommendation, if it is approved, rejected, or uh, inappropriate, and so on. But when we look on, on the total amount, we see that you calculate the total amount for a state party, including all the requests, even if it was rejected, even if it was uh, not considered, and so on. So would you please clarify? Thank you. Philippines. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. We have a number of points to put forward on this item. Number one, every state party has a right to request for international assistance as stipulated in the Convention and Operational Directives. Two, developing countries are the ones that have mainly benefited from the international assistance mechanisms. And three, multiple requests from one state party may not necessarily be objectionable as long as they are needs driven. We therefore do not think it is necessary to limit the total amount of international assistance that can be given to a single state party within the biennium to $200,000. State parties are different, and they request international assistance in accordance with their various national and local capacities and conditions. There can be instances when larger amounts and multiple projects are needed by states, parties, and communities concerned. Hence, we think the status quo should continue and would propose an amendment to the draft decision. Furthermore, we also have a comment on the annex with regard to the assistance approved for the Philippines of $7,500. In the end, we did not pursue this grant, and we would like this reflected in the document. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Philippines. May I ask Cuba to take the floor? Gracias, señora Presidenta. Eh, en primer lugar, agradecer la, la información que ha facilitado la Secretaría. Eh, creo que por lo joven que es esta convención eh, y por la situación de, de inactividad que por algún momento tuvo este fondo, estamos ahora en un proceso que también llevará a una nueva reflexión y buscar mejores mecanismos. Comparto como los eh, delegados que me han precedido que, bueno, que hay que hacer un estudio de cada caso en particular y ver la realidad de cada país, pero también hay que tener un, unos límites, hay que ver cómo lo hacen otras convenciones. Estoy pensando ahora mismo en el Fondo de Diversidad Cultural, donde cada estado tiene un límite de proyectos que presentar y al final se le otorga, eh, a un, no se le otorgan todos los que se presentan en solicitud. Yo creo que habría que reflexionar o el programa de participación en la UNESCO, donde cada estado presenta cuatro proyectos, pero al final es el Estado el que los ejecuta. En este caso habría que tener en cuenta que son las comunidades y no podemos bloquear a una comunidad porque ya se haya pedido un proyecto o porque no se haya terminado un proyecto, pero en todo caso tendremos que reflexionar sobre eso y buscar la mejor solución para que haya un equilibrio en todo este proceso de asignación de los fondos de asistencia internacional. 
cuidando las prioridades, cuidando los países que más nos lo necesitan y también eh, aquellas situaciones de urgencia que así los requieran. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Uh, Azerbaijan. Thank you, Madam Chair. Azerbaijan commends the Secretariat for the outstanding work in preparing the do document 12. The detailed explanation of the situation and the data and statistics provided on the international assistance submitted and approved so far are quite valuable. Our delegation will be looking forward to seeing the information on submitted and approved international assistance to be available on the website of the Convention. Multiple submissions and absence of limits for requesting international assistance have obviously become an issue with the experience gained so far in, since the increase of the ceiling of the international assistance that can be approved by the Bureau. Our delegation has taken note of the proposals by the Secretariat in terms of different considerations that can be given to the issue. We believe that it's important to take into account whether or not international assistance proposals are submitted by the same institution within a country whose communities and institutions vary a lot from one country to another. We also believe that flexibility in terms of limits should be allowed to the emergency assistance requests, and we are pleased to see that this has been reflected in the draft decision. Finally, our delegation would also be very much in favor of knowing better the motivations and context of the countries that have done multiple successive submissions within one year, and we are wondering if the Secretary had approached these countries to better understand the reasons, context, and roles of different stakeholders involved in the submission and implementation of the international assistance requests. We believe it would be important to be aware of the context of multiple sub submissions in that sense, and we would ask the Secretariat uh, to include the information in the next committee's document uh, on this uh, question. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Curtis, would you care to explain, please? There was one specific question and then broader questions about process. The specific question was to differentiate between the number of requests and the amount of requests because not all requests are at $100,000. Uh, the concern behind it, and I hear obviously uh, a number of comments that perhaps it's not the time to do it yet and to let it leave it more time. The, the overall concern is one where the, the new mechanism, which is showing positive trends, and I repeat, in the last two years we have implemented roughly the same of the last, we have approved and starting to process, not fully implemented, about the same as the seven to eight years earlier. So this fund which was accumulating and accumulating is now starting to be implemented. Uh, there is a new mechanism that allows better and easier access to the fund. And we did notice, and that the uh, authority of the Bureau is at 100,000. We did notice that we were getting larger amounts coming through the Bureau, meaning not coming through the committee. If the committee is okay to wait and see how this goes and see how it impacts on the overall fund, we wait. Uh, that is fine. Uh, the concerns are what will be the future implications uh, in that regards. I understand there's a draft resolution, so perhaps uh, uh, the, the draft, res I mean, I, I think uh, the draft resolution, go ahead, my answer lies there. Thank you. Thank you. Any remarks before we move on to the Palestine? Uh, sorry, I, I asked specific questions. I, I didn't uh, have the answers for the two questions. Yes, the Annex is uh, looking at the different status of the, and of, the, of the different projects when we say, so that tracks all of the projects, include those rejected. So it's not, sh it's when we talked about requests, we include those requests which have not been approved. I understand with the Philippines indeed, that may have been an error there, that that project was approved. After it was approved, uh, it was, the request was withdrawn and indeed, this needs to be updated, and we apologize for that. Um, so the, the, the document gives the difference of requests which are withdrawn. This is not about how much money has been spent. That is the point. It is a document to show about requests, not expenditure, if that, if that is what. Thank you. So we'll move to the decision. Please refer to document ITH slash 18 slash 13 dot com slash 12 and its draft decision in paragraph 13. Can we see it on screen, please? Okay. 
Okay, let's proceed paragraph by paragraph. Senegal. I apologize. Merci, madame. Il me semble que la, la vision de ce côté, parce que l'on a vu le, la plaquette depuis assez longtemps. Alors, c'était juste pour dire, quand la mesure était prise à l'époque de soumettre 100 000 dollars, discuter au niveau du bureau, c'était pour alléger les procédures, c'était pour faciliter et, et surtout encourager les États à requérir cette assistance internationale parce que nous avions vu qu'il y avait une insuffisance de demandes. Donc, c'est dans cette perspective que cette mesure avait été prise. Mais si aujourd'hui, il y a cette, cette soumission multiple, elle peut obéir, c'est vrai, à un besoin des communautés, à, à, à un contexte particulier, à une urgence. Mais de notre côté, ça pose un problème. Et ce problème peut être euh, apprécié de différentes manières. Nous, nous respectons les États, nous respectons les communautés. Mais quelque part, quand on dit ça s'arrête à 100 000, le bureau peut étudier. Sinon, après, ça demande du temps. Si on soumet plusieurs demandes par un seul pays, ça, ça nous pose un problème. Et je pense qu'on tiendra, on tiendra compte des contextes, on tiendra compte du, du, de l'urgence. Si vous voulez, tout ça, on peut tenir compte. Mais, de, no, de notre côté... Il sera même difficile de faire le monitoring de ces projets par le secrétariat qui a un problème déjà de personnel. Il faut quand même qu'on si vous voulez, il faut qu'on qu revienne un peu à pourquoi cette mesure avait été prise. Et c'est pourquoi je dis, bon, même si nous, on a besoin de, ces, de cette assistance, hein, on a besoin de cette assistance, c'est vrai, mais il faut quand même qu'on essaye de tenir compte également de cet aspect de monitoring et de cet aspect même de mise en œuvre de ces projets parce que même si c'est différentes communautés qui les soumettent l'institution, l'état parti a un rôle à jouer par rapport à la coordination et à la soumission des rapports de ce qui se passe quand même parce que c'est la mise en œuvre de la convention et c'est l'état parti qui est responsable vis-à-vis -vis de l'UNESCO dans certains cas je vous remercie Mr. Curtis, please. Uh, thank you. I'd just like, if I may, to speak uh, also to the proposed draft amendment, which proposes to continue reflecting and continue getting experience on how this new mechanism is, is working. Uh, so it's, it's uh, in that sense, the Secretariat uh, is not in a position to support, but would support uh, if, if it were. Uh, because I think at the moment the fund is not under risk. At the moment it's not yet a, a problem, but I'm sure it could become a problem if the trend continues. So we are not yet in the situation where it is a serious problem, I think. Uh, but at, at the same time, this is an issue that will need to be monitored, in our opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Shall we move to adopting the uh, draft decision, please? OK, paragraph one. Any comments? Adopted. Two, adopted. Three, adopted. Four, okay, adopted. Five, okay, emphasizes the importance of compliance with criterion A7 for new submissions of international assistance requests as a way to mitigate the administrative risks entailed by multiple submissions. We have the amendment by Azerbaijan and Philippines, as well as the importance of knowing the context of multiple submissions by a single country. Palestine. Just to support the amendment submitted by Azerbaijan and Philippines. Thank you. Senegal. Nous supportons l'amendement. Any objections? No objections. Then we can take it that you're all supporting. Paragraph amended. We move to paragraph six. Uh, requests the secretariat to closely monitor the situation of multiple submissions and report thereof to the 14th session of the committee. Um, any comments? Palestine. Just in support. Okay. Can I take it that you're all supporting Senegal? Supporting? Any objections? 
Jamaica, you're supporting or objecting? Okay. So, paragraph adopted. Paragraph six. Request the Secretariat to closely monitor the situation of monitor. No, we have done that. Okay. Can we adopt it as a whole now? Okay, adopted. Thank you.